Starting this Friday, experts are fearing a new, more contagious version of COVID-19 might cause a jump in cases this spring. One first popped up in the UK, and it really made people freak out in London. It's made its way to Minnesota. So, Heather, should we be freaking out? Where where are we supposed to be about on the, the freak variant? out level on the freak out scale? So here's and, and it, it's obviously Jason. If there's one thing we've learned from COVID, yes. everybody's freak out scale is for sure. completely different. But compared to right. your 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 baseline freak huh, out exactly. Level, right? So here's the issue with this uh, variant or mutation of the COVID because viruses vary and mutate and change all the time. So this is normal for this to happen. It's not like some strange thing. Yeah. And expected. They and expected, expected happen, right? Yeah. And the longer that the virus is allowed to go on without the herd immunity, the more it can mutate. Problematic. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but here's what it is. It's the it's they believe it's more contagious. So 50 to 70 percent more contagious. So that means if you had COVID and you spread it the old COVID or the COVID that's right now, you spread it to three people. With this new variant, you'd be more likely to spread it to five people okay. because it just binds more tightly and more quickly uh, to the human cells. So that's the concern, right? right. Not that it's more deadly no. or more dangerous. No, the concern is that it can spread faster. And when you have more illness in the community, you have more death. And so ultimately the sure. fear is that we're gonna be okay. We're gonna kind of come down in February, but once this thing really gets going, that's when you're gonna see cases spike in March is what the experts say, even though we are mm. vaccinating. The concern is this, there's sort of an exponential spread that happens here, right. right? It's crazy if you look at it. So week one, we're at less than 1%, experts say right now of this variant in the community. But that can, that, if it doubles every week. So week two, you're at 2%, week three, 4%, week four, 8%, week five, 16%. By March, this will likely be the dominant variant in the United States, mm. this more contagious variant. And actually, that's what they think is happening or some people think is happening in California where you're seeing just that huge spike in cases there. Does I mean, obviously, we've seen coronavirus spreading more widely, I guess, in areas with denser populations. Mm -hmm. You look at London, which is very dense. Right. California has uh, its own issues with density. Do, do we know if we should if there's a, a, a variety there here in Minnesota? I suppose if you social distance, they, so they're testing right, for it. it they have. Be, yeah. yeah, they have found it here in Minnesota. They test, you know, about 100 cases or so a week. They're trying to up that that testing there. Uh, right now, they think we're probably no different than the rest of the country but they say, you know, it is it is here, so we'll get here. But it's interesting, you talk about density, because I asked, well, does this mean that we need to, to spread out more? Do we need more than the six feet? And right. I asked this to the expert mm. over at Health Partners, and she said, no, it doesn't change what we should do now. We should just do it better. So huh. we do need to keep social distancing, keep wearing the masks, and vaccinate more quickly, because if the mutations get worse, right. the, if the longer you go without having herd immunity, the more it can mutate. And right now, they think the vaccines work on it, but it could mutate to the point, and sure. viruses have done this before, where the vaccine doesn't work or it does become more deadly. So it's really a race against time. Wow. Yeah, All it's right. it's interesting. Yeah. So keep an eye on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Not not great interesting. Not great interesting. <laughs> no. no. All right. Heather. No, most of COVID besides That's the how, vaccine is not. <laughs> very true. Uh, I had not heard of autonomy supportive parenting. Have you? I haven't heard it described that way, but I've heard what it means. Uh, there's a new study out of Germany. It's about child development, and it shows that allowing kids to make more of their own decisions actually contributes to positive well-being. And positive well-being, in fact, not just for the kids, but ultimately for the parents as well in the long term. Riley, in the short term, this is tough. Yeah, right? <laughs> it can be painful right. in the short term. How do you navigate this with your kids? How many choices do you give them? Are there certain things you give choices on? Well, I think pretty much, I mean, the biggest choice that they get to make right now is, you know, what what color of crayon do you want to use? All Blue right. or red? Yeah. yeah. Um, they like to pick out their outfits in the day. Yes, um, that's a big one. And also their pajamas at night. I think mm -hmm. that's kind of yeah. where I start with it. I right. mean, those are big, like those are big learning opportunities though, right? Yeah. yeah, you know, and there's sometimes where, you know, they don't say on the weekends, you know, you can lounge in your pajamas a little bit longer, obviously, but it's like, okay, time to get dressed. It's time to start the day. We're going to go for a car ride. We're going to get out, walk around the block. What do you want to wear? Cause sometimes my son is like, no, I want to wear my, my bulldozer jammies all right. day. And we're like, okay, well, yeah. we got to change them. So instead of saying, we're going to change now, I say, what do you want? Which one do you want to wear? And he'll right. be like that one. Then we'll move on. Yeah. That's kind of where 
my yeah. opinion right now. This research is sort of limited, right? This was a survey done during coronavirus, and they surveyed a bunch of parents and asked about kind of choices and how it works out and uh, the positive well-being and kind of where the kids ended up on the scale of things. Heather, I remember when my kids were little, mm -hmm. there was... Uh, a, a phase where we were giving them too many choices. For mm -hmm. sure, it's, and I feel mm -hmm. like this can happen pretty easily in food. Yeah. Um, do you want this for dinner or this for dinner? Right. Um, and it's it, this can be a hard, it can be a hard balancing act to figure out what do you allow them to choose and what don't you allow to choose? Because think about it, if you're a little kid and someone's telling you what to do all yeah. the time, you feel like you have no power, no sense mm -hmm. of control. So that at least gives you kind of a little bit of something right. there. I find yeah. it too, when you mentioned food, I think that would be the hardest thing because it's like, you know, what I make, for dinner, I mean, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'll eat something yes. on that plate, but I, I don't typically make a different meal for them, you know, that sort of thing. And, and you know, it's like, say, we're gonna walk to the park or something, and, you know, one kid, one of them might wanna stay back and play with their toys, wanna be in the house, the other one say, let's go. Obviously, I have twins, I'm by myself, I can't, <laughs> right. you know? So yeah. I'm like, we're gonna go walking, we're gonna leave in a few minutes, we need to get going. So yeah. I kinda make that decision, and then they will follow along with it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the food category is one of the yeah. Yeah. tougher ones too. That's yeah. kind of how it goes in parenting though, right, Heather? Like mm -hmm. if you if if you're a parent making all the choices, that's not ideal. Right. If you're allowing your kids to make all the choices, that's not ideal. Right. right. It seems like a little a little mm -hmm. column A and little column B is typically right. Yeah. the right way to go. And it was interesting. The researchers also said that they know in the short term this can be tough for parents to figure that out. It also requires patience on the part of parents, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. But in the long yes. run, they say, and what they found was that it helps children make these decisions later on in life. It gives them sort of that more sense of control. And then in the long run, it's, it's better for everybody. Right. Yeah. You gotta suck it up when they want to wear like the uh, purple striped shirt yeah. with the pink polka dotted pants right. or whatever. That's yeah. when you yeah. snap a picture and just have it forever and say <laughs> when you're graduating. That's, that's right. What you wish, that's that's what I do now. I bring out those little kid <laughs> pictures. Of